Welcome back to the Center for Off-Road Research and Antigens and Science. Today we're going to look at the FuryTech Olympus chassis. It has all uh, Enjora parts on it right now, with the exception of the rear truss on the back, which it we didn't have at the time, so I bought a hot racing one. It's metal. There is a metal steering horn coming to replace the white one. I know that triggers a lot of people, and uh, the man who commission this wants to see it run and I don't want to see it torn up yet because it's a giveaway car so what I've done is covered the entire body of the car with blue tape so if we if we uh, drag it over the rocks it doesn't scratch anything it'll still look like a brand new vehicle uh, for the eventual first owner also I have pulled the tires off that he has chosen which are these uh, TSL boggers and I did another video where I compared the TSL bargers that I had to these, and they're two different tires. They're both RC four-wheel drive. This compound is really good. I like it a lot, and I now see why you guys like TSL boggers. Mine were terrible, and they're smaller, and the compound was not good, and I was just kind of surprised that they have different size boggers. So uh, keep that in mind when you buy the Super Swampers. And this is the one you're going to want to get because they're better. The, uh, I guess it says 22 by 7. I'll zoom in on that. Let's see what it says here. If I can get to focus. That's on the top there. SR10 or 5R10 by 7.5R10. That's it. 22 by 7.5 R10, which means that uh, a 1.0 rim. So these are just get the right one. It's, these these are better than the boggers I have by a lot, and I think that tread on them is fantastic. But anyway, um, aside from that, we're gonna test this with scramblers on it, and uh, it'll have more ground clearance, but it'll be slightly, ever so slightly tippier than if it had the uh, larger tires. So, um, I might have said that backwards. It's more tippy with the big tires. It'll be less tippy with the small tires. We are gonna have more ground clearance this way. And today, I have a new piece of equipment, very sciencey, and this is going to give me a angle down to the, well, almost to the hundredth of a degree. And it measures it in zero point five increments. So you're never going to see any last number other than zero or five. It'd be kind of cool if it did, but you know, it's okay. Measure down to the 25 hundredths of a uh, degree, which that's pretty, that's good enough for me. Good enough for this uh, little experiment today. So we'll start off uh, with the tip angles and uh, Again, we are using the same rims for this test. I do have some weights in the front here that I pulled off my other truck that were specially cut. And I may end up specially cutting uh, a set. And the reason for that is these screws that you see on the back of the wheel prevent the, the uh, hex weight dish from going into the dish of the wheel and it just basically holds them out too far where you can't bolt them down but i've got a dremel tool i'll show you how i started doing that on one if i can find it here all right so i've got the tsl bogger and these are ssd wheels which i really like it is a little unfortunate that they have screws on the back that prevent these hex weights from going in but if you want them to you can still make them work you just have to get a dremel tool out or something better than what i've used I've got a drill press outside that I can do some mill work with. And uh, I just started that with my uh, Dremel tool. And then this will fully seat into the rim, but you have to put some uh, cutouts in there to make it work. This next scene was shot out of order. I'd already completed the testing for it. And I thought I'd show you how I mounted the uh, battery on this. Um, I used one piece of Lexan sheeting for the top part, and it's literally just covered in a uh, Lex, uh, 
Teflon tape, so it will resist scratches and things like that. Uh, it's also very lightweight and uh, it's held in with zip ties and I'm seeing right now that I forgot to put this one in. I'll do that next. But I've got a zip tie. There'll be one on each corner here, one here, and one here. And you wouldn't even notice that if you're looking at it. In fact, uh, if you watch the rest of the video, you won't even see it. But uh, they're there, and I'll put that zip tie in. But uh, the battery is going to be held in with Velcro right there. And this way, if you drive the thing off a cliff, uh, your battery tray is not going to come unglued and fall out because it's literally zip tied in and it's going to be there and uh, it's not going anywhere also the way the electronics are mounted it's kind of a dual shelf system if you view this from the bottom you may not be able to tell but there is a clear piece of lexan that keeps the electronics up off of the drive shaft and there's a little shelf in there, this Lexan, that I have clearance for the drive shaft and the links. And the thing about these uh, FuryTech chassis is they allow you to create your own system of mounting for the batteries and for the electronics. Uh, I don't know how I would do it much different other than if I was going to build one for myself. I would probably use a small battery and tuck it in right behind behind the uh, um, motor or I might even build a shelf here and use one of these Orlando Hunter batteries and I don't know if it can fit in there very well but it could like that if I mounted it in this way you could shelf it in there and it's narrow enough that yeah, this, this Orlando Hunter Hunter battery is so small if you wanted to you could actually mount it right there on the servo with some uh, electrical tape that would be pretty trick because that's uh, axle weight that is beneficial and it's so small this battery is so small that you could even mount it sideways up front and it wouldn't be terrible it might get in the way of the chassis but it could be done. There's a hundred ways that you could choose to put this in, but that's how I chose to do it because it's simple, it's easy, it's for a kid. They'll be able to literally put a battery in there, stick it on, run your wire out the back where you can uh, easily grab it and uh, plug in your wires, put it back here. Or even smarter than that, if you wished, you could actually plug it in first so that you have a long lead and then slide your battery forward and hook it on. Now if you use the black battery you wouldn't even notice it there. And the Orlando Hunter batteries are so little that the chassis barely notices it there too. So um, you can go with a big battery, you can go with a little battery. Mounting it here does put it up a little higher but it gives you the flexibility to put any battery you want in there and you're not limited. Uh, suppose you're out trail running that day, you might want to run a big 800 ma, you know, so or 450 in this case. Um, I have an 800 that is somewhere, I don't know where I put it, but uh, you could run that. Trail running is not that difficult. Maybe run time is your uh, main focus on that day. Uh, this this design gives it the flexibility to use any battery and there it is with both zip ties in the back you can barely even tell they're there they're symmetrical I might even put a little bit of red reflective tape on these two and it'll look like tail lights that'll be cool how about that we just made something that's functional into something that Looks like it should have always been there. So I like that. That's a that's a great idea. Before I get started, I'm going to show you how I'm going to modify the test incline meter and uh, plane to uh, properly display the uh, angle. I don't like hooking that to the clip. So what I've done is 
I got myself a nice rusty razor blade and this is magnetic so what I'm going to do here is clip that directly to the flat plane that we're going to be testing with and now tape it so it stays in one place and now that is going to measure the exact plane that it sits on. So with that uh, out of the way, testing methods are established. I think that's a lot better. I believe it might be my, uh, I don't know if it is. It's only magnetic on the bottom. That's okay. I saw uh, they had one of these on Matt's Off-Road Recovery and it's a YouTube channel that I um, really like. So. When I saw them using that to build the world's largest off-road wrecker, I thought, why don't I have one of those? So I did. I bought this. And right now it's measuring 0 0.4 degrees. And that's probably due to the fact that I've got stuff taped to the bottom unevenly. So, whatever. It's okay. I don't care. Uh, we're going to accept that as being accurate and begin with the test. First thing we're going to do is see how much... It can pitch up in a static manner. And to do this, I'm going to rotate both axles backwards so they both grip. And we'll just see what we get for an incline before it falls over. 31 degrees, 32. Still going. Probably going to be in the 50s. Wouldn't surprise me if it's more, but I'd have at least 50 something. 55. Boy, this thing is planted. It fell at 62 degrees. So we know it can pitch up at 62 degrees. Let's see what it can pitch down at. It won't be as well going down for several factors. Uh, one being the weights in the front. Another, it has telescoping shocks which unload the chassis and let it fall forward. It's already lightening up at 49. 49 is what it can do. Down to 62, pitch up, 49, pitch down. And it should do a little side, better side healing to the right than the left just because the motor is on the right side. And I'm gonna do this without a battery because who knows which battery we're going to run in it. It will affect it a little bit. It's getting light now. 47 degrees is a right roll. We could probably take 2 to 3 degrees off um, these numbers for uh, with a battery. Right now we're testing the chassis just by itself. 43. 46, 47. Let me know in the comments if you think this is a better way to do it than an iPhone, but I really like it so far because it frees me up from uh, having to use my phone to measure when I would much rather show you the measurements. For this test today, I've chosen to use a Venom 430 Ma battery, and it's on the heavier side. And uh, one of the things that Mike wants in his uh, crawler is runtime. So uh, we're going to forego the lightweight of maybe an uh, Orlando Hunter battery and use something twice as heavy with double or more of the runtime. Well, the next metric I think needs to be investigated is what is the wheel speed of this 
particular crawler and it has the uh, Fury Tech motor in it that came with the transmission and we're going to power it through worm gears on a Jora axle so we get the wheel spinning here and we'll see what it measures at. Two kilometers per hour. That seems like it's pretty stable. So these are not fast, but they have a lot of torque. Except for the speed bolt, which is 35.4 miles per hour, not kilometers per hour. But uh, you'll see the feet that it actually is. But anyway, aside, aside from what we're testing today, so two kilometers per hour, but it has a lot of torque. So it's got enough power to drive straight up if it had to. The next line I thought it would be fun to do is the cliff climb. And uh, I wonder, I think this thing has overdrive gears because I wonder if it has factory overdrive gears. So watch what it does. I just noticed this. We're going to have to test that too. Watch it hunker down as it drives forward. That is usually something you only see with underdrive gears. So now we have to see if that is in fact what we have. In reverse, it's doing exactly what you would expect. The uh, front wheels are pushing faster than the rears. So it would stand up and forward. They're pulling faster, so it's going to squeeze it down. So now we've got to find out exactly if this really does have underdrive gears or overdrive gears, either one. These are the Enjora axles, and I didn't even know what it had, but clearly these are overdriven front gears or underdriven rears because they're not turning together. The fast ones are. Uh, the front ones are faster and easily outpacing the rears. I did not realize I was building an overdrive rig. And this will give it more ability because as it goes over a rock surface that's rounded like a, like a basketball, it'll be able to kind of grab onto it the same way a basketball player would pick up a basketball one-handed by palming it. And uh, that's pretty slick. I didn't realize I was building a, a rig that had overdrive gears. But I like it. Let's see how fast the front tires go. And here we go with the front axle overdrive test. No, it doesn't like it yet. This is the front axle overdrive test. We'll find out how fast it'll go on the front axle. Two. Do I see three? There's three three kilometers per hour. So this is on the upper end of two, and it just dipped into three for a moment there. But this is a uh, slightly overdriven uh, front axle, and it did. There, there's three. So it's right at three. And the back tires will never go above two. So um, it's probably got about a, I don't know, at least a 15% overdrive roughly, maybe a 20. I don't know. I'll uh, do a little research someday if it if people really want to know. But uh, the Enjora axles that Mike bought for this truck are overdrive axles. So that's pretty cool. First line we're going to try is the cliff climb. It's the one where the uh, rocks that you're trying to climb on are narrower than the wheel track of the vehicle. Kind of jumped it up there. Didn't mean to do it quite like that, but. That's what we got. So, 
try to get that front tire right into the seam of those two rocks. There we go. And then I'm going to climb on the back side of the sidewall. And that will help pull the nose down as it goes over. If you can do that, if you can climb with the back side of the sidewall, it will actually climb steeper than it can on a flat plane because as you see a tire as it rotates, the back side of the tire goes up. The equal and opposite reaction would be to shove the entire chassis down. And it did the cliff climb without too much trouble at all. Just out of curiosity, we'll see if it can make it down. This is an equally challenging descent. It is fairly steep. There's that smooth Fury Tech control. I like having that motor out front too because you can see it and you know if it's actually turning when you're creeping along. I'm not going to call it made it, but it sort of made it. Landed on its wheels anyway. I'm going to try the undercut climb now. I think this truck would be even better if it had C10 front links, Gladiator rear links, and I'm going to say it, uh, in the past I would not have recommended uh, the little guy racing products, but I just saw yesterday how really great the Swamp King tires are. Unfortunately, my first experience with the uh, little guy racing products was the, the uh, Trail Kings, which I really didn't like, but the uh, Swamp Kings are nice. And uh, if I was going to turn this into a comp rig, that's what I'd do. I'd do the Swamp Kings, Gladiator Rears. C10 fronts and this thing would get stretched out it's already wide and uh, I just think it would do a little better than it does now based on what I saw yesterday from Lance's truck it would increase the scale to realistically about a 118 and it, it makes it pretty big but if you want capability uh, sometimes scale really helps. Almost tipped it over there. But yeah, that's uh, that's what I would build if I was building a, a, a comp rig right now. Another undercut climb where you're undercutting the back tire. Stuck it. I don't know what to call this next line I'm going to try, but it's kind of a flat landish thing, but it's domed and peaked, and sometimes wider trucks have a hard time with this because you're going to drag the dip to make it go forward. So I might just call it the landline. I don't know. Why not? For lack of something else to call it. Let's see how it does. If it had Gladiator rear links on it, this would give it just a little bit higher breakover angle and uh, a little bit more capability. But that is nicely going over right now. Sliding a bit, so I'll back it off. Pull it back through. Maybe one more time. Might have given it up too much. I think we got it anyway. Just started to drag the frame, then it brought the rear end up and gave itself the clearance it needed. But that's the nice thing about this Fury Tech motor is 
you can just creep it along and kind of monitor the progress without having to worry about uh, whiskey throttle and pushing the thing too far when it doesn't want to go. Another thing, when you're turning on a line like this, or on an incline, if you go full steering, this is something I've noticed. If I go, if I go too much steering at a time, it'll actually slip down. What I'm trying to do here is hook the front tire over that ridge so that I can have the back end in line to do exactly the same thing. I'm just going to creep it along here and see if that back end is going to drop out or if it will take itself on the rock down there. And it does catch the rock before it tips over. This is the only place where, uh, well, one of the only places where a wide chassis kind of hurts it because you can't have both wheels on the ground at the same time necessarily over the peaks. It's doing it real well. Now, just kind of have to work it forward. Got a battery finishing in the background there. Kind of a balancing act here because it's sitting on the skid plate and rear axle. This was the only line my buddies couldn't do yesterday. At least I didn't see it happen it may have happened but I didn't see it and uh, in fairness really wide rigs do not have the advantage here in fact I'm losing the front end because I had to kind of have it hooked over that peak in order to make it and uh, this attempt may have just ended we'll see yeah I did uh, wider chassis don't like it here so much every new chassis has to go over the stairs I have a feeling this is gonna go straight up it without too much drama Good clearance all the way. No problems. This is the new section. Some of you guys have seen me build in uh, one of the previous videos to this recently. And it's basically to fill that hole, that uh, solid color, kind of chocolate brown. Uh, obstacle there and it's harder than it should be sometimes other times you can walk right up it get into the wall a little bit in this case I will treat the wall as a cliff face because it is there. Let's see if we can't get it to go off. I think I have to ramp my back wheels up the side here too, not just the front. That is another successful run. This final run tonight is the cave climb. It's one of my new favorites. And it's interesting because you kind of have to run your right front up that rock to get the left front to go sideways on the rock face. And then 
that uh, sidewall is actually what is pulling the thing upward. And once I realized how to use a sidewall of a tire to climb, everything I owned became more capable because I was driving it better. Let me adjust the camera angle a little bit. Try to take this one all the way to the summit. I have to just readjust that front climb a little bit. Don't want to drop my rear wheel in a hole. We'll just see how it does here. It's going to go in the hole. Hanging that left rear in the air for a minute. That's why I don't like making the back tires real heavy. Because if I have to hang one of them, I don't want it to have enough weight to pull the entire truck over. So if I'm going to weight the back axle, it's going to be right down the middle at the dip. Because I don't want to drop tire pulling the thing upside down one more camera readjust for you guys hopefully get a little more break over on that right front where that overdrive comes in on the front it's able to kind of pull itself up without moving the back around too much I would say this is a very capable rig and it's cool looking Olympus chassis is a nice uh, piece I don't know who in particular welded that thing together but it's almost too beautiful to drive but at the same time it's titanium and you're not really going to hurt it the only thing that's going to happen is you'll scratch the discs up a little bit maybe but um really good rig really good uh all enjora parts with the exception of the truss in the back which is hot racing and uh fury tech besides that but that's a fantastic rig. I'd be happy to have that in my collection. Um, some lucky person is going to win this. Some kid. It's for the kids raffle at the next Iowa RC Outlaws Camp and Crawl. And whoever you are, you're a very, very lucky person because you're getting a fantastic truck. And you can thank uh, Mike for that. He's the one that generously donated all the parts to build it. That's all for tonight. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you in the next one.